So we'll chant the Buddha's words on loving kindness, but before we just jump in, is anybody new to chanting? I imagine many of some of us are. Yeah, great. That's there's probably many in the room who are. Yeah, fantastic. So chanting is a way that histor at the time of the Buddha, uh, the teachings are always uh, passed down, handed down orally. So not until about 400 years after the passing of the Buddha was anything actually written down, which is interesting. We have all these um, teachings that have been translated and bundled in the suttas for us. And also really heartwarming when I think of it, how people cared enough about these teachings to sh just talk about them. And so many of the traditional chants were ways for, you know, through repetition to remember the essence of the Buddhist teaching, sometimes to remember a direct story. Uh, many of them are told um, in story form. So chanting for me has been really a refuge over the past couple of years. There's so much going on in our lives and in the world. And in moments when it feels, the heart feels that it's teetering on the edge of overwhelm with it all, um, chanting has been a way to, to really re remember the art of sensitivity, not even something that I have to do or intellectual lies in any way, but chanting just to let ourselves go and just read and repeat the words of the Buddha. It's just such a beautiful way to invite the whole system to absorb it. And it's not a demand, as if we were sitting down on the cushion, we might start with that instruction, sweetie, it's, it's not a demand, just an invitation to relax and be at ease and receive this moment fully. Well, this is the same attitude we can have when we chant, just to relax and be at ease and receive the teachings from the Buddha. Yeah, and the Buddha and all of the people since the time of the Buddha who have cared to keep these teachings alive and translate and write them down and re you know translate again and use slightly different language to see how that works and so in in a really um, sweet way we're placing ourselves in a lineage a lineage of practitioners a lineage of freedom seekers every everything in the in the Buddhist teaching points back to freedom this and these teachings too, the teachings on loving kindness, point back to freedom as well. So just if we can just, before we even begin the chant, just if you want to close your eyes you can, but you don't have to, but we can just sit and see if we can have a felt sense of all the people throughout history generations old who have struggled through life and all of our imperfections many different phases of life all over the world and all these people just seeking freedom not perfect, not even people who knew freedom, but just people who wanted to taste it and kept returning to see if a taste was available. And so here we sit doing the same thing. So, if you want to follow along with the, the words that are in front of you, great, I'll chant it for us. Mm. 
Now let us chant the Buddha's words on loving kindness. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties, and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm, and wise and skillful, not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety may all beings be at ease whatever living beings there may be whether they are weak or strong omitting none the great or the mighty medium short or small the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born. May all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another even as a mother protects with her life her child her only child so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings radiating kindness over the entire world spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths outwards and unbounded freed from hatred and ill will whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding by not holding to fixed views the pure-hearted one having clarity of vision being freed from all sense desires is not born again into this world you could just rest back Let the words wash through you. Not holding on to anything. Settling into the rhythms of the body.
without force. Just connecting with what's easiest to connect with. Perhaps weight or pressure of the body. Maybe temperature. Where our clothes touch the skin. Just anything that reminds us of this body. We might even notice the breath. Its own rhythm. Its own movement. Filling the lungs, emptying the lungs. Not demanding, let the heart know the breath intimately. We're just seeing if it's there, checking in, noticing. So simple. To set down all of our worries and concerns and just connect with the body. The body just as it is. It's a very loving gesture. It's like balm. And from this place of not pushing or demanding, we might invite an image of a dear friend, perhaps a mentor or a teacher, Someone who's easy to love. You might sit them right next to you or in front of you, whatever you'd like. And just take a moment to see them. To really see them.
to know them. to appreciate them. This person, this being has so many good qualities. They've been generous at offering their gifts to the world and to you. With gratitude, we want to offer back our heartfelt good wishes. We'll offer some simple phrases that we can repeat. So feel free to make your own. Or feel free to drop the phrases altogether and just stay with the energetic. May you be happy and peaceful. May you be safe and protected. May you be healthy and strong. Inviting the heart to really connect with the resonance of each energy, each word. May you be happy. And peaceful. May you be safe and protected. May you be healthy and strong. And when the time is right, you might imagine this dear one looking back at you. And seeing you appreciating you
from their perspective. Drinking in their image of you. Not being afraid to really take it in. To know what they appreciate about you. And with this reality that we're loved and appreciated by others, we'll offer ourselves benevolent friendliness. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be safe and protected. May I be healthy and strong. If at any time you need to refresh this image of your dear friend looking back at you, remembering your goodness, appreciating your goodness, it's okay to just go there. It's like going to the well. And then we can begin again. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be safe. and protected. May I be healthy and strong. Inviting this goodness to sink deeper into the heart with each breath. May I be happy and peaceful.
May I be safe and protected. May I be healthy and strong. And if there's juice or energy, you can stay here with yourself as long as you'd like. Or if it feels right, we can move on. I'm bringing to mind another dear friend. Could even be a pet. But just go with whatever comes to mind. Whoever comes to mind. Place them near you, next to you, or somewhere close. And just hold an image in mind, appreciating their goodness, their friendship, their heart. And when you're ready, offering the heart's good wishes. May you be happy and peaceful. May you be safe and protected. May you be healthy and strong. May you be happy and peaceful. May you be safe and protected. May you be healthy and strong.
You might even imagine your friend receiving the goodness of your heart. Perhaps with a slight smile on their face. Or you might know they're receiving it with their posture relaxed. When the time is right, you can remember that love has no bounds. The Buddha said love is limitless, has no boundaries, has no preference. You can imagine you and your two dear friends together offering heartfelt good wishes to the room of people here tonight. And some you might know and some you don't know very well. Just have a felt sense of 25 pe so 25 people or so who are here and the three of you together are offering your good wishes to the room May you be happy and peaceful. May you be safe and protected. May you be healthy and strong. May you be happy and peaceful. May you be safe and protected. May you be healthy and strong. Imagine this goodness being received, all the hearts bathing in love. And 
when the time is right. You and your two dear friends joining forces with everyone in the room. And offering this loving friendliness in all directions. It's taking a moment to feel into the force of goodness. And then when you're ready, offering it up in all directions. May all beings be happy and peaceful. May all beings be safe. And protected. May all beings be healthy. And strong. And remembering, too, that there are many flavors of love. So if the reality of life connects with your good wishes, and you feel the impact of suffering in any way, we can allow that to move the heart into compassion, karuna. May you be happy and peaceful, all beings in all directions. May you all be safe and protected, all beings in all directions. May you be healthy and strong, all beings in all directions. And when you're ready, you can drop the phrases, and just return to the body, the flow of life and energy right here in the body. Feeling the sensations of the body, breath.
And we'll end our meditation tonight by just receiving this little chant that I've learned from one of my teachers. It's a compassion chant. The Kuan Yin chant. So you can just receive it if you'd like. Namo Kwajuyin Pusana O 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 Kwajuyin Take a minute to stretch your body, move a little if you'd like. You can even move away from your computer for a moment if you'd like to do that. Uh, it actually stimulates the vagus nerve and it can, the vagus nerve plays an important role, role in regulating the nervous system. So we might have um, memories or references of, you know, grandmothers or elders humming, right? And often it, it was a self-soothing technique. And so it's a good thing for us to remember as a very ordinary tool um, in times when we need a lot of tools just to do a little humming. Sometimes I'll keep, you know, like this Kuan Yin chant and there are a few other simple mantras that I really uh, appreciate. And sometimes I'll just invite one of those mantras into my mind and often with words and just allow my mind to chew on it, something healthy to chew on rather than uh, the, the ruminations that I might have. And sometimes I'll just hum it, you know, just invite the body to absorb it. 
it's it can feel like wow there's no possible way of finding ease with all that's moving in our lives and yet there are some simple tools like metta does tend to feel good right and it might not be easy there are, metta will bring up everything so we can sit down with loving intentions and we might notice all of anything but love come forward that's really common too so i just want to name that but some of these kind of when metta is there when loving friendliness is there that it does have a kind of a can have a soothing quality to it so even if it's not in the formal cultivation right in the recitation of phrases or um, offering energetic friendliness in all directions even if it's just in the little bit of soothing quality that the heart remembers its own goodness you know like in the humming or or a song even it could be a popular song that reminds us of the goodness of love that is still really worthwhile right for us to to remember these simple strategies and the other thing i wanted to say is that you know love isn't dependent on someone receiving it sometimes playing you know metta is a very creative practice so that was just something that i've done that i made up it didn't come from the buddha I mean, the practice itself came from the Buddha, but the creativity yeah. gets to be ours, right? Learned a lot from Jill Shepard as a, a teacher in the insight meditation tradition. She often adds this little bit of remembering that it's possible for someone else to feel it, to receive the goodness. And sometimes that helps the heart relax a little bit, right? And so it's not so much for the other person Metta is something that is felt here and now, right? It's here in our heart. So it isn't dependent on whether or not someone receives it, but we can use that little creative tool of imagining someone receiving it as a way to soften the heart here. Like, oh yeah, look at that. Someone's receiving it. Ah, oh, maybe the heart, for me, the heart relaxes a little bit with that. Like, oh, it feels good to them, right? So it's just, but it's always pointing back at this heart that knows how to be good this heart that knows how to be kind and so that we remember the possibility of kindness of loving friendliness in any moment right i've had a, a pretty long and busy day but still the heart knew how to taste that goodness you know with just a little bit of effort and that's a good thing to remember even at the end of a long and busy day or whatever kind of day we've had then metta or loving friendliness is often not that far away, even though we might think it is. Yeah, sometimes, you know, our creative strategies really do work. And sometimes, you know, feeling using someone who we have a problematic relationship with can be complicated. And honestly, someone who I have a complicated relationship with could be our partners or our children, mm -hmm. because we're really intimate with them, right? Yeah. So it can show up somebody, uh, you know, often uh, the people I love the most are the people I choose for difficult people in mm -hmm. this practice. If we would have followed the traditional trajectory, we would have started with um, perhaps a benefactor and then moved to self and then dear friend and then a neutral person and then um, groups or all beings, uh, a neutral person, a difficult person, and then groups or all beings. Yeah. And so sometimes the difficult person, it's like the we've already primed the pump, right? We start with the easiest people and then we kind of get a little more difficult, a little more difficult. Um, but, you know, it doesn't always go that way. Every heart has its own rhythm. So I love it that you tried something creative and you can always, we can always go back too, right? If it doesn't work, then, you know, like I was suggesting in some of the instructions, it's okay to go back to the image of your friend and remember their goodness and sometimes that can soften the heart again mm -hmm. yeah going back to the well whenever you need to and you can move back you know like i almost i quite often will start with my youngest godchild or with my my dog um either either of those two people are really they really do something for the heart and so sometimes if i get stuck i'll just you know remember that they're there too <laughs> oh.
And obviously another way to work with getting stuck is uh, to remember the possibility of compassion. Yeah. And even compassion for self, right? For this heart that isn't quite ready to open. Yeah. I'm wondering if, if how that went, the little bit of switch to compassion practice right at the end. The Buddha said that there was there, you know, that love can't get too big. And love doesn't have any preferences. Therefore, there's no boundaries. So even if it doesn't feel that way, even if, you know, we, the cultivation of love seems to have some limits for us, right? We go, oh, reach that person. We're like, I don't know, right? <laughs> or those, some, somebody who's done us harm, we're like, well, I don't know if you're worthy, right? That might be what the mind thinks of. But we can know in that moment that that's, you know, that's not love, for one. And we can still remember, well, the heart did know how to love, so the heart does know how to love, right? It's just that perhaps the views in the mind uh, and un unhealed wounds are interfering with the, the boundless, limitless possibilities, right? But because the heart knows how to love, we can totally remember that and trust it, right? If the heart knows how to love, well, then the heart knows how to love, right? There's just no, it doesn't make sense that there would be a time where the heart would say, I, I have forgotten how to love. <laughs> it may momentarily forget what love is like, but it won't forget how to love. Appreciate the Buddhas. I mean, these are this is direct from the Buddha, as far as we can tell, right? These are the Buddhist instructions, and so the often we what we think about love is is a little bit um, off center. So peaceful and wise and skillful. These are all ways that love manifests for us, right? So it's good to remember that while well, love comes in so many forms and allows us to be peaceful, allows us to be wise, allows us to be skillful. Why love is that, that metta, that loving friendliness is the quality of, yes, this heart knows how to be sensitive, knows how to be good, then allows us to do good things, to dedicate our life to goodness, to skillfulness, to peace, to freedom. So it's really good to remember that sometimes the notions we have about love, like it's always effusive or always gentle or always like intense. It's not always like that. It's a whole lot of things and takes on many different forms. And so we can just learn to recognize the many flavors of love that might show up or, or at least be curious about that. Like, oh, look at this heart, you know, like practicing being peaceful and skillful for decades, for at least the last decade, I think you said, right? That there is some root there. And so in a moment when we can recognize like, oh, I am kind of being patient right now, that just reinforces that good habit. It reinforces that thread of love that allows the heart to be good in this particular way. Yeah. We can be amazed at our skillfulness, like, oh my gosh, right? I didn't just fly off the handle in that moment. That was really good, sweetie. Yeah, that's really good. Or whatever it is, you know, we each have our thing. When I was um, completing this four-year teacher training that ended last May at through Insight Meditation Society, Sharon Salzberg was one of the teachers there. She's one of the founders of IMS and very generously offered her time to help support our growth on many occasions. And this one, and many of you know that she wrote this wonderful book that will probably go down in history as one of the 
um, most important, I think, most important Buddhist guides available to, to us. And it's called um, Loving Kindness, The Revolutionary Art of Happiness. And if you haven't read it, it's I really recommend it. Anyway, Sharon has spent her life understanding love and um, feeling the power of love and the necessity of love through suffering, right? A lot of suffering has taught her how to love. And through, I think she has this really um, impressive ability to to point to all of the nuances of love that we might not notice. And that's really made an impression on me and learn, you know, and this heart really cares about, and it's something that we can all do, learn to pick up on these, many of the nuances of love, but also in the little ways that love is expressed by other human beings throughout our lives. You know, like somebody who yeah, we got a heavy snowfall a few, a couple of weeks ago, and my neighbor, who wasn't what I would consider young, shoveled our sidewalk. And it was just so sweet that she, you know, took that, took that on. And one, one day that Sharon was with us, she, um, her, this book, Real Love, had not, I don't know when it came out, actually, but she brought a box of them and she gifted them to all 20 of us and she had offered some teaching and then the session ended and we all left and then when we came back to the room they were all sitting on the teachers platform with little <clears throat> notes that just said our name on them sticking out of each book and a very brief inscription in all of them it was in 2017 and it just says to Shelley with Meta Sharon but I was so touched really by this gesture that there was no she, there was no ask behind it right it really it could move me to tears just like a very simple gesture I mean a book for 20 people that's money you know it's time to have them sent or shipped or whatever she got them there and she also took the time to write something in 20 of our books and some of us she didn't know very well and then took the time to find little pieces of paper and write our names on them and then just left them without any ask from us no thank you needed you know nothing transactional about it just a very simple gift and it was a yeah it was something that i hope continues to stay with me. And so I'd like to read a little bit from Real Love tonight. <clears throat> and this is, um, you know, illustrating what I think is one of Sharon's great gifts is, you know, finding the nuances of love and really pointing them out. Love as a verb. She says, I had a dream once, and in it someone asked me, why do we love people? Still dreaming, I responded, because they see us. I woke up thinking, oh, that's a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> to see and be seen, this very notion might fill us with an expansive sense of satisfaction and ease. We might feel joy at the prospect of being affirmed because of who we are rather than as a result of any achievement or effort on our part. Two, the thought of seeing and accepting another person for who they are might also make us happy. Such mutual recognition feels good, solid, balanced, authentic, and real. Such a simple thing, right? And something that we do quite often in our own ways, we really put some effort relationally towards caring about the people that we have in our lives and in many ways seeing them. And so just to really, to think about all the many opportunities we have to cultivate love relationally in this way, even right now, Many of us, 
you know, are sitting and listening, or maybe we're not sitting and we're doing something else, but the words and the program is operating in the background because we want to absorb it, right? That's, I think, one of the things that we do on Zoom is often cook dinner or something, but have something wholesome in the background so that it helps us maybe cook a little more mindfully and feed our families a little more mindfully, right? But just this this opportunity that's so simple and right in front of us to really, okay, look at this, witnessing being witnessed. In those moments in the in the meditation when we're receiving the gifts of someone else and reflecting them back, right? Just another simple moment. And it's not, um, yeah, I can often dismiss, dismiss, I find myself doing this with my beloved, my beloved partner. We work at home together quite a lot, and there are moments when we might come out and ask each other a question or something, or do a quick transition, I'm going to go teach, she's going to do something else, or she's going to teach, and I'm going to do something else, so we... I find myself like negating these as if they're insignificant or unimportant. Like I don't have to actually look at her. I don't have to actually stop what I'm doing. I can, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Or I can receive what she's offered and I can move it on without a thank you or some acknowledgement. But in in reading, you know, and remembering how that love is in service of freedom, then I really don't want to keep doing that. (laughs) You know, I want to use these ordinary moments of our lives to see if the heart can land in its own goodness and recognize patience, skillfulness, receiving, seeing someone else, being seen in these simple moments. There's so many of them. It's amazing how many there are. Even a little nod, I was walking my dog earlier and passing people on the path and just really practicing. I was walking with a friend and attending, listening, right? Sometimes talking, but also just like a little nod or acknowledgement, a quick smile, a raise of a hand, just to acknowledge someone's presence. I don't know what it did for the other person. I don't know if it did anything, right? But I do know that the heart felt good and a little resourced by the activity. And I don't know about you, but being resourced right now feels really important. There's a lot moving, right? Yeah. So finding simple ways that aren't exhausting to be resourced feel good. I've been teaching about faith, another wonderful book that Sharon wrote, and I've been really um, kind of moved by how simple it is to uplift the heart, right? (laughs) Oh, read about faith. Practice a little loving kindness, sweetie. Nod at your neighbors. Stop and listen to your partner, right? Play it on a Dharma talk even when you, you know, have to be busy at home cooking or cleaning or something. That's okay, right? Just all of these little strategies, they don't take a lot of effort. Hum, right? Repeat a mantra that might be useful. Yeah. Remember that we can be skillful and good. And just see what, what like as an experiment, just be curious about it. There is another story. I wanted to perhaps read a few poems tonight, so I'll, I'll get there in just a second. But as I was thinking about what I might say and practicing with loving kindness throughout the week, and I remembered uh, this, a good friend of mine and, maybe to many others, even in this room, Debbie Norgard, who used to be a a teacher and office manager at Common Ground, and she was a, a good friend. And she died fairly young of breast cancer. And as after she had, she had passed, many of us, you know, shared stories about Debbie. And what I heard from many times over, Debbie was a nurse by training and was the kind of kindness that people felt when she helped bandage a finger or tend a wound. You know, somebody told a story about cutting their finger and coming into the office at Common Ground with the bloody finger and asking for a Band-Aid. Well, 
she got up out of her desk and went over and very caringly band took care of the wound a very simple probably didn't need much care but you know a very simple gesture and a very made a kind made a very deep impact on a person that they were able to recall that story years later so again just like an example of the of the of the kind of kindness that i imagine felt good to debbie but also made a long a lasting imprint and some of us have pets and children in our homes that we can we can practice with too in these ways so i often look to poets for a little inspiration and one of my favorite poets is nikki giovanni and I've got all of her books of poetry. And her latest is Make Me Rain, Poems and, Pro and Prose. It looks a little book like this. And often she writes, um, she dedicates poems to people she knows or has been inspired by. And so I was reading a bunch um, and looking for ways that she saw people or that saw people saw her right looking for both the giving and receiving quality in the poetry so I thought I'd read a few and then you can tell me what flavor of love you see here this one's called quiet for Marveline quietly you open a book to let the sunshine in. Quiet, you hum a song that you create to let yourself relax. Quietly, you shed a tear when you let a loved one go to heaven. Quiet, like bread rising or your grandmother sleeping. Quietly, when you sew a quilt to keep warm. Quiet, as the salt melts in the bath water. Quietly, 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 when you know whatever else it is, you were loved. Unloved. For, for Aunt Cleota. I don't understand how folk can purchase drugs but not turnips or celery roots, and I sure don't understand why anyone would not cook a bone two or three times. That's what makes a quilt again and again. And did I forget love? Why in the world would you not want to tie love to love, to that little piece of cloth? Or why wouldn't you share love with those pieces your grandmother or grandfather or aunt or uncle embraced? Everything has value, only sometimes we don't know it. My Aunt Cleota gave me a dress from all the little pieces of her love. How could I not wear it with pride? I am so lucky I will never be cold, but more, I will never be unloved. Transitions for Geraldine Drayton. I cry thinking you will leave us. You cry thinking you are going. But we all are just changing. As the leaves snuggle into the ground and the mole makes their winter homes under the trees, Seeds take a long drink to rest and prepare for the spring sun, and you will get ready for heaven. All is transition, and love is forever. We will always remember you, and you will always remember us. Flowers will grow, trees will add new leaves, birds and chipmunks will laugh, the clouds will embrace us. Love, love never goes, there is only transition. So... Here we are at the end of our evening together. My hope is my hope tonight was to give you a, a little bit of a love bath <laughs> so that you remember the possibility of love even in moments when it feels like it might be hard to find. So the ordinary moments, the daily moments, a little bit of poetry, a song, chant, smiles from each other, possibility of connection, Right, without too much effort. So may this practice and this offering have a, 
far-reaching benefits beyond our imagination. May our practice benefit all beings without exception. Thanks for being here, friends.